You are welcome to lecture series on optimization theory. Lecture 1 The Preliminaries Definition The general optimization problem is the problem of the form Optimize Z equal to G of F of X subject to x element of omega where the function z equal to g of f of x being optimized is called the objective function and the set omega is the domain of the definition of the objective function the sense of optimization can either be maximization or minimization. The nature of G, F, and Omega determines the complexity of the optimization problem. Now let us look at classifications of the optimization problems. Generally, optimization problems can be classified as follows. One, as linear or nonlinear. It is classified as linear if both the objective function and the constraint are linear. And it is classified as nonlinear if either the objective function or the constraint is nonlinear or both of them are nonlinear. Two, it can be classified as unconstrained or constrained. It is classified as unconstrained if there is no restriction on X, while it is classified as constrained if X is restricted to be in a given domain. Three, we also classified optimization problem as univariate or multivariate. It is classified as univariate if x is a single variable. And it is classified as multivariate if x is a vector of n variables, where n is greater than 1. 4. We also classified optimization problem as single objective or multi objective. It is single objective if G is a scalar function of F. For example, G of F of X is equal to alpha 1 F1 of X plus alpha 2 F2 of X plus and so on until you get to plus alpha m fm of x where alpha 1 alpha 2 to alpha m are scalars and it is classified as multi objective if g is a vector function of f for example g of f of x is equal to the vector of f1 of x f2 of x to fm of x 5 we also classified optimization problems as convex or non-convex a convex optimization problem is one in which the objective function or objective functions is either convex or concave and omega that is the domain is a convex set and it is non-convex if either the objective function or the constraint is non-convex. 6. The optimization problem can also be classified as smooth or non-smooth. It is smooth if F has a continuous first order partial derivatives and it is non-smooth otherwise. 
Now, let us look at the, co the concept of convexity and concavity. Convex set and convex functions play a very important role in the study of optimization problems. So, we have to discuss them first. Convex set. A non-empty set S is said to be convex if for every two points X and Y in S all the points on the line segment joining these two points also lies in S. The line segment joining two points X and Y is given by this equation. Z equal to lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y for lambda lying between 0 and 1. Let us illustrate the concept of convex set and non-convex set with diagrams. Consider the set of point S in this shape. Let us take two points, the first point x in S and the second point Y in S also. Let us now join these two points by means of a straight line. As you can see, Z, which is the point, the set of points on this straight line, all of them lies within S. Now let us consider the set of points in this other shape S. And if we take the point X here and the point Y here, then joining these two points by means of a straight line, you can see that not all the points on this straight line falls within S. Some points are outside. Clearly, the first illustration here shows that this is a convex set while this other one shows that this is a non-convex set. Further, consider this shape. This is the set of all points in a regular hexagon. This set is a convex set. What about this other one? The set of points inside a triangle. This is also a convex set. Now look at this shape this L shape, the set of points in this shape is a non-convex set because we can take a point here and another point here and the line segment joining the two points will not lie in this set. Finally, the set of all points inside this rectangle is a convex set. Example 1. Let us consider the set S of all other pairs x, y such that y is equal to ax plus b. That is the set of all points on a straight line. Let us take two points x1, y1 and x2, y2 in this S. Since x1, y1 is a point in S, it must satisfy this equation. That is, y1 is equal to ax1 plus b. And also, since x2, y2 is in S, this equation must be satisfied. That is, y2 is equal to ax2 plus b. Now, what we have to show is that this point, xy equal to lambda into x1 y1 plus 1 minus lambda into x2 y2 is in S. The point xy equal to lambda into x1 y1 plus 1 minus lambda into x2 y2 is equal to lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 which is this first member of the pair comma lambda y1 plus 1 minus lambda y2 
which is the second member of the pair that means this is x and this one is y so what we want to show is that y is equal to ax plus b if we can show that that means the set is a convex set now since this is y y equal to lambda y1 plus 1 minus lambda y2 let us substitute for y1 and y2 here we recall that y1 was ax1 plus b and y2 is ax2 plus b opening this bracket this will give us lambda ax1 plus 1 minus lambda ax2 a being common we factor it out to give us lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 in bracket now lambda times b is lambda b 1 minus lambda times b is b minus lambda b lambda b minus lambda b will cancel out remaining b so we have a into lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 plus b but recall what we have inside the square bracket here is x so that means y is equal to ax plus b this shows that the point x y is in the set s hence the set s is a convex set term one if a and b are convex set then a intersection b is also a convex set proof let us take two point x y in a intersection b then x y is element of a and x y is element of b by definition of the intersection of two sets please note that x y element of a implies that lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is element of a since a is a convex set also x y element of b implies that lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is element of b since b is also a convex set now we have seen that lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is element of a and also lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is element of b that implies that x y element of a intersection b implies lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is also element of a intersection b which therefore follows that a intersection b is a convex set please let us take note of this that if a and b are convex set then a union b might not necessarily be a convex set convex and concave functions let s be a convex set and f be a function of n variables x1 x2 to xn defined on s then one f is convex on s if for any two points x and x prime in s and lambda line between 0 and 1 f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda x prime is less than or equal to lambda f of x plus 1 minus lambda f of x prime and 2 f is concave on x if for any two point x and x prime in s and lambda line between 0 and 1 f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda x prime is greater than or equal to lambda f of x plus 1 minus lambda f of x prime let us give the geometric interpretations of these two definitions the geometric meanings of the above definitions are as follows 1 the line joining any two points 
on the convex function can never underestimate the function. Let us see this by means of the following diagrams. Let us draw the x-axis and the y-axis and take this to be our convex function f of x. Let us pick two point x and another point x prime. Clearly, this point here is f of x while at x1 we have f of x1 and this is the line through the two point x and x1 let us take a point on the line segment joining these two point x and x prime and let that point be z at this point z we have z equal to lambda x plus 1 minus lambda x prime. Now, through the point z, we have this vertical line drawn so that at this point, we have f of z. And at this point, we have lambda f of x plus 1 minus lambda f of x prime. Clearly, as you can see, f of z is less than this point. This point is below this point. So that means this line can never underestimate the function f of x. Also, the line joining the two points on the concave function can never overestimate the function. We also illustrate this by means of the following diagram. This is our x-axis and this is the y-axis. And here is the concave function f of x. We take two point x on the x-axis and the point x prime on the x-axis. At the point x, at this point we have f of x and at this point x prime is f of x prime then this is the line joining these two points on the curve let us take the point on the line segment joining x and x prime this point is z that is z is equal to lambda x plus 1 minus lambda x prime through the point z we draw this vertical line so that at this point is f of z and at this point is lambda f of x plus 1 minus lambda f of x prime clearly this line that's this point is below this point so that means this line can never overestimate the function f of x example number two one the function f of x equal to x squared for all x element of r is a convex set Of course, as you can see, this is the graph of f of x equal to x squared. Clearly, this is a convex set. 2. The function f of x equal to minus x squared for all x element of R is a concave function. This is the graph of f of x equal to minus x squared. As you can see, this is a concave function. 3. The function f of x equal to x cubed for all x element of R is non-convex. Here is the function f of x equal to x cubed. Clearly, this function is non-convex. 4. The function defined as f of x equal to 
absolute value of x minus 1 for absolute value of x greater than 1 and 0 otherwise is convex. This is the graph of the function f of x equal to absolute value of x minus 1 for absolute value of x greater than 1 and 0 otherwise. So clearly this function is a convex function. We note that 1. A linear function is both convex and concave. 2. If f is convex, then minus f is concave. 3. If f and g are convex, then f plus g is also convex. 4. If f and g are convex and non-decreasing, then the composite function of f followed by g is also convex. 5. If f and g are convex, then the composite function of g followed by f need not be convex. Example 3. Prove that the function f of x equal to x squared is convex. Of course, we saw this using diagram that this function was a convex set. Let us now prove it algebraically that it is a convex set. Proof. We wish to prove that f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda x prime is less than or equal to lambda f of x plus 1 minus lambda f of x prime for lambda line between 0 and 1 and x not equal to x prime. That's if we take two distinct points x and x prime in the domain of the definition, we have to show that this inequality holds. First, let us obtain the expression for f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda x prime. If f of x is equal to x squared, then in place of x, if we put this, that will give us lambda x plus 1 minus lambda x prime all squared. Let us take these two terms to the left hand side. Taking this one to the left, that will give us minus lambda f of x. That is minus lambda x squared. Also, taking this one to the left, that will give us minus 1 minus lambda f of x prime is x prime squared. So, the right answer will now be less than or equal to 0. Let us carry out this expansion. Lambda x all squared will give us lambda squared x squared. 1 minus lambda x prime squared will give us 1 minus lambda squared, then x prime squared. Then the product term will be 2 times this. 2 times lambda x times 1 minus lambda x prime will give us 2 lambda x x prime minus 2 lambda squared x x prime. Then minus this lambda x squared open this bracket that will give us minus x prime squared then plus lambda x prime squared less than or equal to zero please observe that if this bracket is open i mean if we expand this if this is expanded what you have here will be one squared is one times x prime squared that will give us x prime squared and that x prime squared will cancel this x prime squared. That's x prime squared minus x prime squared will be 0. Then here, the product of the two here, that's 1 times minus lambda times 2 will give us minus 2 lambda. Then times x prime squared. That will give us minus 2 lambda x prime squared. And when you add it to this, that will give us minus lambda x prime squared. And finally, minus lambda squared will give us lambda squared. Then times x prime squared. So this will then give us 
lambda squared x squared plus lambda squared x prime squared minus lambda x prime squared plus 2 lambda x x prime minus 2 lambda squared x x prime minus lambda x squared less than or equal to 0. At this point, we can then collect terms together, terms involving x squared, terms involving x prime squared, and the terms involving x x prime. So when you join this one, lambda squared x squared with minus lambda x squared. That will give us lambda squared minus lambda in bracket, then x squared. Then joining these two together, that will give us lambda squared minus lambda in bracket x prime squared. And then joining these two together will give us minus 2 x x prime into lambda squared minus lambda. That is, we have this. Lambda squared minus lambda x squared plus lambda squared minus lambda x prime squared minus 2 into lambda squared minus lambda x x prime less than or equal to 0. Observe that lambda squared minus lambda is common in the three terms here. So we can factor it out to obtain lambda squared minus lambda into x squared plus x prime squared minus 2 x x prime less than or equal to 0. The expression inside this square bracket is a perfect square and this can be factored as lambda squared minus lambda into x minus x prime all squared. This is less than or equal to 0. If the product of this term is less than or equal to 0, and we know that x minus x prime squared can never be negative, so that means what you have here must be negative. So this will imply that x minus x prime is not equal to 0, and lambda squared minus lambda is less than 0. That is, x minus x prime is not equal to 0, and lambda squared minus lambda less than 0 will imply lambda into lambda minus 1 is less than 0. Solving this inequality will give us x minus x prime not equal to 0, and lambda is greater than 0, but less than 1. Since the assumptions hold, that's the assumption that x minus x prime must not be 0, and lambda must be greater than 0, but less than 1, since these assumptions are satisfied, the relation holds.